Hello everybody and welcome back to another weekly recap. In the weekly recap, I'd like to go over anything interesting in the RuneScape community this week. And oh boy, was there some interesting stuff. Now once again, Jagex has put forward a new updated equipment rebalancing blog with a few changes to it. This week we also got a new content update called the Isle of Souls which added in a bit more life to the Soul Wars area. As always, I'll be going over the weekly Q&A and anything else I find interesting in the RuneScape community this week. Alright guys, let's get started. Alright, so let's start off with the new and updated equipment rebalancing update. Now on January 21st, Jagex put forward a proposal to change a bunch of existing gear in the game, both buffing what they viewed as too weak and nerfing what they viewed as too strong. But the major things that people are concerned about are the actual nerfs to certain items including a blowpipe, Dehyde, the Din's Bulwark, and the Need Is Not Face Guard. Now on the 26th of January, they amended the equipment rebalancing blog and changed a few things. Now in this update, they totally axed the idea of nerfing the face guard and said they would leave it as is. They also slightly tweaked the nerf to the toxic blowpipe and all importantly added in beta worlds for people to test out all of the new items on and gather feedback. Now coming to yesterday when they released an updated equipment rebalancing blog. Now they have made a couple of additional changes but for the most part a lot of things are remaining the same. Now this is by far one of the most controversial updates that we've had in quite a while and tensions are definitely very high right now. But with that said let's go ahead and read through the changes. But the first new update is to Blessed Dragonite Armor. Now originally Blessed Dragonite Armor was to be nerfed at the exact same rate that Black Dehyde was but that is changing in today's blog. Now Blessed Dragonhide is only obtainable from Clue Scrolls which means they are a lot harder to obtain yet they have pretty much the exact same stats except for a plus one prayer bonus. Now although the Blessed Dehyde is technically getting nerfed, the magic and range defense will remain the exact same as what the Black Dragonhide is now. Which means going forward not only will they have a plus one prayer bonus but they also have a notably higher magic and range defense. Now one of the most controversial changes is to the Din's Bulwark. Now they have updated the proposed nerf to the Din's Bulwark. Now they're still going to be nerfing the melee stats at the same rate they stated in the last blog going from around 140 in all of them down to 100. As so a significant nerf. Now the difference is today they are proposing now adding on a minus 25 magic defense bonus but conversely bumping up the range defense from 150 to 200. Now the next major updated change is to the Basilisk Knight. They would like to remove the special attack from the base Basilisk Knight, however keep it on the Basilisk Sentinel which is the superior, and also make it so you can no longer auto retaliate the attack. However they're not going to be nerfing the stats of the Basilisk Knight or of the Basilisk Sentinel that are currently in the game. Now they state that there now is a potential for us to introduce a higher tier and more difficult variation of the Basilisk Knight, and feedback suggestions would be welcome. Now one of the biggest unanswered questions from the equipment rebalancing update is what would happen to the current standing personal best. Now because the blowpipe offered some of the highest DPS in the game with it being nerfed a lot of these personal bests would no longer be possible or at least not for a while. As to what they're actually going to end up doing is resetting all currently obtained personal bests as they exist in the game. They're going to take those personal best times, store them, and mark them as being obtained before the equipment rebalancing changes. Historic personal bests would now be made accessible via the adventurer log in the player owned house. And that would apply to pretty much all of the personal bests except a few including the Theater of Blood, the Nightmare of Ashihama, and the Gauntlet. Now that is pretty much it for updated changes. Now there was a week long beta of all of the equipment rebalancing changes and these are what they decided to update. Now I spent quite a while reading through reddit posts regarding this and just trying to get a general sense of what people thought of it. However while I was down in the trenches I noticed that Madaiza mentioned that combat achievements are right around the corner within a couple of weeks which and as they want to have the equipment rebalancing out before then this change could be coming in the next week or two. Uh, so very soon. Uh, so it's all definitely a pretty big change. I know some people are angry, some people aren't. As always, just a reminder not to take it out on, well, Aiza or any of the other mods who are answering you, but definitely make your voice heard. Now yesterday we also received a content update called the Isle of Souls. Now this is an update to the Soul Wars area and is all about fleshing it out and making it feel a little bit more connected to the rest of the game. They've added in new monsters, new amenities, and just generally added in reasons to actually go there. For example, there are now maple, yew, teague, and mahogany trees. I feel like mahogany trees are actually kind of notable. They've added in different ore veins up to mithril. They've added in a harpoon spot, a net spot, a cage spot, and a bait spot for fishing. You can also now catch crimson swifts, copper longtails, and grey chinchambas. As so a new low level chin spot is actually pretty notable. 
Now on top of adding in amenities, they've also added in a few existing monsters there. And notably, they have added in a new spawn for sand crabs, which means they're going to be another viable training location. But also moss giants, pyre fiends, pyre lords, cows, and chickens. Now there will also be a new monster dungeon on the Isle of Souls, which, which will include skeletons, lesser demons, greater demons, fire giants, blue dragons, baby blue dragons, and iron dragons. Now notably, Konar will actually assign tasks here, particularly greater demons, fire giants, blue dragons, and iron dragons. Now another really big change here is they've actually added in a runite rock spawn in the dungeon which means there is now an additional safe way to get runite ore in pay to play. Now the final major piece of content in the dungeon is that there's actually a new thievable chest to open that requires 28 thieving. Each time you loot it you're going to get 150 thieving experience and loot from a new table. Now as part of that loot you can now also receive a dark key. Now if you bring that dark key to the new crumbling tower which is just added in as well. You can find another chest that when you open you'll get 1500 thieving experience per key, as well as loot from a new table. Now the Crumbling Tower will have a few other things including the actual chest. They will have a new monster called the Forgotten Soul, which will be a new spectral creature that is affected by the Ectoplasmatter. And that is pretty much it, just some minor updates to a new area to flesh it out a bit more, mostly just early to mid level content that adds in new opportunities to kill these monsters. And that is it for content updates this week. Now last week we did get a new runelight update and there's a couple of really interesting things here. They've now added in the ability to export your ground marker settings which, which means if you have a bunch of tile markers saved for a particular boss or for a particular skilling activity, you can now export those and send them to your friends which, which will be incredibly useful for stuff like the Chambers of Zarek, Theater of Blood, pretty much any high level PVM, as well as stuff like the Hallowed Sepulchre and there's just a ton of other uses for this so a really awesome feature. There are of course more minor updates and tweaks, but thank you Runelight for your continued awesomeness and another great update. Now finally here we're going to do a quick recap of this week's Q&A and they had a lot to talk about of course regarding the equipment rebalancing. They didn't answer exactly a lot of questions, but they did answer a few of them very in depth. Now I am simply going to be summarizing the answers here, but I would recommend going and watching the Q&A yourself because a lot of the answers are fairly nuanced and the replies are very long. Now first up here, with the blowpipe nerf, a lot of PVMing won't be as balanced as it once was. Will there be a redesign of new or existing bosses to compensate for this? Their current plan right now is to see how it goes on launch, see if new metas form, and if needed they will of course make changes to existing bosses if the content proves to be too challenging or for other reasons. Why does it feel like feedback is being ignored? Now this was a very long winded answer so again just summarizing here. Now to begin with here they did indeed make changes based on feedback but some things they didn't change even though the overwhelming feedback was to revise it further. Now even though the overwhelming feedback on reddit is to leave everything as is and don't make any changes as sometimes changes need to be made and the polling system is somewhat flawed. They give an example for stuff like 6 hour splashing, the void nerf, hiding poll results as integrity changes they've made in the past that would have or did not pass a poll. The problem with the polling system is nerfing any items would never pass and never really have passed. So do we accept that we're never going to be able to nerf any items in the game or make any changes like that or do we have integrity changes? Now the next main question was regarding the Din's Bulwark. Essentially why are you still nerfing it? It's a rare drop from raids therefore it should be overpowered. Now essentially they just reiterate that essentially the Din's Bulwark is still very overpowered in PvP. They don't think that it requires a level of skill to justify the current defensive bonuses. With the changes they're trying to promote the Bulwark still being strong but maybe while also using more other expensive gear to, to fully tank. But they would also be open to actually changing the drop location as well as to not come from the Chambers of Zarek and maybe elsewhere. Now during this answer they do highlight that there is going to be more changes coming in the works for all of this. So just to reiterate this is not the final iteration of the equipment rebalancing and there will be additional changes based on feedback tomorrow. As uh, so moving on from equipment rebalancing, when are the 6 Jad challenge coming to the game and what are going to be the rewards? Well the only rewards from the 6 Jad challenge is the prestige of course but also a new transmog for the Jad pet. You'll only have to complete the challenge once to get the transmog and you'll also get some tokel for your time as well. The launch date for that should be February 17th. Do you have an update on Temporos? Now the loose time frame for that release is going to be mid to late March. Anyway guys, that is going to be it for the weekly recap. Again, there will be more changes tomorrow to equipment rebalancing, so I'm very curious to see what changes they end up making. 
Now, before I go here, I want to give a massive thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. A huge thank you to Ocelot, Kush Patel, Brad Sings, Brian Robinson, Zach Staba, and Cappy, who all subscribed at the Dragon Tier. You guys are awesome. Thank you again. Joining Base Titch, Birdbot, Grumpy Chef, Timothy Chen at the Runet Tier, and of course, all of you guys. I really appreciate you. If any of you guys are looking for another way to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is an awesome way to do it. You'll get access to my video release schedule, get a custom role in my Discord, as well as be immortalized in all of my future videos. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.